do we know so many of our like metabolites like go down like we have less nad we have uh less taurine so is the same true for glutathione do glutathione levels change with age and do they go do they go down do we yes know? yes they do and that's something that we have noticed i don't know how many decades of research has been out there showing that starting the age of 30 is uh, now 30 is not a magic number for for everybody but around 30 is what we have seen that there's a discrepancy between the body's need of glutathione and how much your body can produce and for the very first time what the need has exceeded what the body can produce and as you can imagine this this gap this this small gap is going to keep on increasing as the days and the years goes by and eventually the gap is big enough for you to say, wait a second, I'm seeing all these issues because of a high amount of oxidative stress that's caused by all these different components. And then why is the body not producing enough glutathione? You can give all the circuitogogs in the world and it can raise up a level. And you're hoping that it goes about what your body can, about what your body's needs are. And sometimes it does not. And so uh, the magic number, what we found out is about 30 is when the, there's a first dip in uh, the, the first dip discrepancy between the body's need and what your body can produce. Now, keep in mind, as we get older, our needs does not decrease. Mm. It either stays the same, and in some cases, it increases. And the, and the, and the reasons are out there. If you talk about uh, cellular senescence, and you're talking mm. about... Uh, uh, zombie cells, and you're talking about all these different uh, components that are that are not getting cleansed or not getting detoxified, not getting re removed from the body, are actually sending pro-inflammatory markers inside your body all the time. And that pro-inflammatory markers are actually depleting some of the glutathione levels as we speak. So it's like a double whammy, right? We're not getting rid of it. In fact, these are producing not just a little bit of oxidative stress, but a lot more. And so it's in, our, it's in our best interest to make sure that we never have this imbalance between our body's need and what a body uh, and the body is able to produce. If we can match those two things together, um, I truly believe that we can have a perpetual life of graceful life. I'm not sure I'm not sure you're gonna live forever, but we are we're gonna be very close to living a very healthy and fruitful life until the day we die. This month, I've got some great news to share with you. The Bioptimizer's Black Friday mega sale has already started. Rather than just a weekend, it's happening through the entire month of November. This mega deal is available only for our listeners with our code MODERN10. The mega deal includes great discounts on all Bioptimizer products. On top of Magnesium Breakthrough, my wife is a huge fan of their digestive products. She is taking mass signs and gluten guardian to optimize her digestion of carbs, proteins, and even gluten or casein. There are also new products for sleep, gut, and brain health as well. All products are backed with a 365 day money back guarantee. Now it's time to put your health at the top of the Black Friday wish list. The biggest discount you can get and amazing gifts are available only on our page, bioptimizers.com slash modern with the code MODERN10 throughout November. Thank you for your support. Does glutathione levels have impact on some of the diseases of aging? And particularly, I'm thinking about like diabetes and, and metabolic dysfunction that some people get uh, as they get older. So the question that you're asking me, is the disease caused by lack of glutathione or is the lack of glutathione uh, or is that disease is, is causing lack of glutathione. So causing is <laughs> causing is a difficult question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so the, the thing that we do know right now is there are a lot of known diseases that are out there that has low glutathione levels to begin with. I'm not sure yeah. if the disease was caused because of low glutathione level or the disease caused low glutathione levels in the first place. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Only thing that we do know is that this disease have low glutathione levels. For example, uh, recently, even for COVID, right? All COVID cases, they were there. There was a researcher out in Russia that did all the study and look at all the patients. They saw all COVID patients has 
very low glutathione levels. That does not mm. mean that low glutathione levels cause COVID, but the COVID mm. itself depleted all the glutathione reserves. And when the reserves are depleted, the cytokine st uh, storm kicked in and, and people were having uh, uh, issues with the cytokine storm. So I, I, I think there is mm. a, it's, it's a second correlation. It's not that mm. the glutathione levels are uh, lack of levels are causing diseases, but the, the fact that diseases are reducing the glutathione levels is for sure something that we do know as of today. Now, uh, if you peel back the onions and go back and say, hey, what, what caused the disease in the first place? And why is it attacking only glutathione levels? Uh, that's something that is above my pay grade at this point. Uh, I wish I can talk more about that one. Uh, but it's something that is is fascinating. I have, I've I've been listening to a lot of uh, uh, healthy aging and longevity conferences that has happened in Germany and uh, in the United States and places like that. And so I'm learning about the, all this philosophy. Uh, but yes, there are, there are plenty of diseases that we know of that have low glutathione levels, cancers, mm -hmm. uh, infections, uh, metabolic disorders like uh, uh, cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, uh, uh, things like that. All those have uh, low glutathione levels to begin with. You did say so around thirty. Start getting a low, possibly get a yes. low, low glutathione. Is there any way we can tell that without measuring it? So you have to get a blood draw, or you there's some symptoms that you would be able to notice. So, yeah, the symptoms of low glutathione levels are very, very hard to figure out. Right? Mm. If somebody asked me, I said, "Hey, Nayan, if I take glutathione, how am I going to? What am I going to feel?" I said, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I get this question probably about once a day, every single day for my patients. If I take glutathione, what am I going to notice a difference? I said, Mr. Jones, I have no idea what's going to happen to you. All I can tell you is that you take it for 30 to 60 days. And if you see a change in your life that has that you can that you can attribute to uh like it's not a subtle change. It's not something that's oh, it's a little better. No, you you you'll see a profound change in you in, in your body. You can attribute that that okay, that's part of the uh, reason why how glutathione is helping you. Like first time when when people say that hey, when I take the glutathione, I sleep better. I I had my aunt talk call me yesterday. I said, man, I don't know what what you're doing to me, but this glutathione stuff is really good because I'm sleeping better. I said, does does said, does it anything to do with sleep? Or is it reducing the stressors from your body that's allowing your body to have a restful sleep, right? So we look at the symptoms. I don't have any particular symptoms that I that I do know of that can tell me that, okay, that's the symptom. You have low glutathione levels. I don't have that. So mm -hmm. as, as of right now, the only way we, we do know is to measure the glutathione levels. But then let's see the levels between 500 to 1,000. Let's see levels 650. That's normal, right? Yeah. Yeah. What you're okay. not measuring is how much oxygen stress you have, how much uh, mm. exposure to chemicals you have, and how much uh, how much everything else you have. You can measure your MDA levels and see what your stress markers are, and that is that this is just one stress markers, uh, mm. but that's about it, right? You're not yeah. you're not able to measure a lot of different things, so it's it's hard to pinpoint as to, okay, if we have this problem of this symptoms, then take glutathione. Right. Okay, so our glutathione levels start going down and without it, then we get this oxidative stress and we have this detox uh, issue. So how can we raise the glutathione levels? What options are there for, yeah, raising glutathione? So, so the glutathione is, is produced endogenously. Mm -hmm. It needs three amino acids, pretty much, right? So it's required to have three amino acids, two enzymes, uh, and with a, with with a, without a catalyst, it can produce glutathione. The the catalyst is selenium, uh, but the two enzymes. If you don't have any gene defect and you can produce those enzymes, the only thing remaining is the three amino acids, which you can get from a diet very easily. Glycine and glutamic acid is in funny diet abundantly, so there's no concerns over there. The only concerns you have is cysteine. Cysteine seems to be very uh, low in most of your diet, so having cysteine-rich foods is going to give you a fighting chance to produce glutathione in your body. So I like whey protein. 
There's a lot of meat sources out there, lots of, lots of vegetable sources out there that have uh, cysteine in them. Um, I'm sure you can just put cysteine rich foods in your favorite search engines today, and you can get a list better than I can give you today. <laughs> but that list is going to is going to tell you that hey, this is how cysteine you get out of it. So if you can replace cysteine, uh, will be fantastic. The second least abundant molecule is glycine. Uh, so if you take glycine and cysteine uh, rich foods, I think you'll be your body's able to produce enough glutathione. But again you're depending on your body's ability to produce glutathione. So it requires ATP and AD. So it requires multiple different things for energy sources to make sure the chemical reactions are, are, are happening in a timely manner. Now, keep in mind, as we age, our needs have not reduced. It has mm -hmm. stayed the same or increased, but your body's ability to produce is also reduces down because your body temperature drops. The enzymes levels are dropping. Everything is everything is kind of getting lower and lower. And so sometimes uh, you don't have enough enzymes to produce all the glutathione you need. And now for all of a sudden, say, okay, I need some supplementation, right? Mm -hmm. So the next stop comes supplementation. So what supplements do I have, right? And there's lots of supplements uh, out there right now that that's, that shows glutathione. But better yet, you can just take the three amino acids in a capsule form. And just drink mm -hmm. that, and the body can really produce its own glutathione. Easy way to do that part. Uh, <clears throat> if that's not the choice for you, or if you if you have a uh, gene mutations or gene defect or gene exp uh, uh, expression that is not able to produce glutathione, then you may need glutathione supplementation that comes in the either capsule forms, liposomal technology, intravenous form of glutathione. Uh, keep in mind, none of the glutathions are right now are FDA regulated. So you, it's something that you may want to be cautious uh, to have a trusted source. Uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, your listeners are probably looking at something uh, that's out there that you are able to tell them. Uh, and so having those glutathione supplementations are some uh, is like an add-on to what's out there right now anyways. 